Well, thank you guys so much for all logging in and being here. My name is Robin Chu, and I am the owner and director of Growing Healthy Children Therapy Services. And we were thinking about how we wanted to support all of you during this time. And we felt like one of the most important things we could do is really focus on sensory input and how that supports regulation, especially because this is such a unique time, it, it almost forces us to get back to our roots. And so our talk today is going to be focus, focused on those sensory strategies to survive the shelter in place time and really any hard season of life. I know that you all have examples of those. And we try to make this very practical, very much like go ahead and print this document and take it from there. I also did add some slides to the end with other ways. I just thought from every single perspective what a family might need in this season. And so um, the fun part about this, this is me, you guys know me and my background, but we have our special guest, Sarah Lafredo is going to be presenting with me today. She did her capstone project, which is kind of like a doctor's equivalent of residency as she was getting her doctor of occupational therapy degree. And she just wrapped that up. She's graduating here in a week and a couple days and has helped put together this resource that we call Regulated and Ready, which we felt was a good start to surviving with sensory input throughout this season. And, um, and so she's gonna be coming in and giving you all some ideas of how to adapt the activities in that basic toolkit that I know you all printed out to the unique needs of your family and your children. So we're gonna hear from her in a couple minutes. So before we get into the regulated and ready basic toolkit that I asked each of you to print out ahead of time, I wanted to talk a little bit about what regulation first even means. And this is such a hard concept. I mean, this is a time period when we all are feeling strapped, stretched to the max, like just beyond our capacity. And so the idea of putting on your own oxygen mask before helping your child um, takes on a whole new level of hard. And I just, I recognize that and I know that personally, I've got three amazing children who are trying to get their schoolwork done. They are eight, nine, and 11. And they're also grappling with the whole, they've got birthdays coming up and what's that gonna look like? So there's a lot of emotion flooding for all of us at different times. And I know that we've all been surprised by how a certain Facebook post or a certain piece of news hits us and maybe brings something up in us that we were not expecting. And so before we jump purely into as purely as we can, sensory, separated that out, we really need to think about um, just permission to take that deep breath, permission to take care of yourself in a moment where it feels like everyone needs help all at the same time. Walk away, take the deep breath. And I know the hardest part is we don't always even know what we need because we're so flooded, because we're so overwhelmed. So it's also okay to ask yourself the question, what do I need? And then acknowledge that you have no idea what you need in that moment or that all the things like you feel like you need are no longer um, accessible. I need a babysitter. I need a house cleaner. I need a, right? And you could make a list and then just look at it and grieve that those things are not currently available. And then also feel that gratitude of, when you see something on that list that you actually can get, like a glass of water, or we have a really steep driveway, and I know that my kids will be safe, hopefully, we had an interesting situation the other day, but in general, they're going to be pretty safe if I just walk halfway up that driveway and back, check in, and then do it again, check in as many times as I need to. So we're gonna find those couple things on the list of what do I need, or at least just acknowledge that we have no idea and that this is really hard and feel the reality of that by leaning into the hurt that regulation first actually comes, even though it feels like in the moment, if you push it away, it's going to be safer. So I wanted to start there 
and I want to live it out. So regulation first from a sensory perspective, I want to just do a couple of quick activities with you all to help your brain be ready to take in this information, but maybe just to give you the gift of a little bit more regulation today to brainstorm with you what could be on that list. So I want to start with just basic muscle contraction. One of my very favorite things to do, because I hold a ton of stress right here in my neck. I mean, of course I have no stress because I'm the expert on regulation, but no, not really. I hold that stress. I do. I feel it right in here. And it's what we do with that, right? So I like to roll my shoulders up. If everyone could do this, I know you're doing it, even though I can't see you. Take your shoulders up to your ears, squeeze as tight as you possibly can, and then roll them back towards the wall or the room behind you and drop them down low. We're gonna do that one more time, but we're gonna add a breath in. So we're gonna breathe in as we roll our shoulders up. And then slowly breathe out as we roll our shoulders back. That always feels so, so good to me, even in the hardest, craziest moments. Um, there's lots of ways that we can get that muscle contraction. And the reason from a sensory perspective, we always start there is because of proprioception. Proprioceptive input is coming from every muscle fiber and every joint as it pushes together and pulls apart. And even some of the receptors deep in your skin, like when you get a massage. That proprioceptive input comes up to the brain through those four super highways, bam, and it cascades serotonin release, which is the same thing as an antidepressant. So really, when we think about muscles contracting, we're thinking about helping our brain to get into a place, like our own bodies being the boss of our brains in that moment and forcing from a body approach us to get in a regulated place. We don't always think of everywhere that there are muscle fibers, but when you breathe in and breathe out, you actually are activating, you are relaxing and contracting a whole lot of muscles in your inner core. And so that's why the next thing on this list that we're just gonna practice what we preach for a minute is breathing activities. We're activating a lot of muscles. We also need oxygen in order to feel like this is all gonna be okay. And so getting that oxygen in through some very conscious breathing techniques is a wonderful way. So the first thing I want to do with all of you to just get ourselves in this mindset, and we'll come back to this at the end, is alternate nostril breathing. So go ahead and <laughs> I always feel uncoordinated when I do this. Um, plug one of your nostrils. So I'm going to start with my left and I'm going to breathe in through my <laughs> right nostril. It tickles and vibrates when I talk while I do it. So I'm going to breathe in. And then I'm going to hold it and plug that nostril and breathe out the other side. Now I'm going to keep my hand in the exact same position and I'm going to breathe in through my left nostril. And now I'm going to plug that side and breathe out through my right. So hopefully that felt like a little bit of a breath of fresh air, even if you can't go get a breath of fresh air right now. And then I want to take a moment just to get fully present, and then we're going to jump into some of these basic strategies. So I want you to take a moment and notice or write down in your world, what are you hearing right now? And now we're gonna keep getting fully present by just looking around and recognizing, labeling, writing down if you want to. What do you see around you right now? You can notice any reaction you have. You might see something like dirty dishes in the sink and notice a reaction coming up in you, a frustration. You might, I'm looking over at my bookshelf and I see a couple of books that just bring back super fond memories. And then I feel that rise of gratitude and love for those happy memories. And then that leads us into the next one. So what do you feel right now? And again, this is a be real time. This is not a pretend, a when you see a friend and they say, how are you doing? And you just say, good. 
Nope, we're gonna get fully present and just recognize any combination, any concoction of emotions that you're feeling. Awesome. And what do you smell right now? Maybe nothing. Maybe that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> and then what do you taste? I just ate a couple of cashews and I'm drinking some tea right now. What do you taste in your world right now in this present moment? So any one of these regulation first strategies, you absolutely can do with your own children or your own family at the dinner table as a like reset moment, right? We all need those. We all need to be directing those at different points. You could do them right before your child jumps into therapy. For our therapists, you could do these at the beginning of your therapy session and lots of ways to adapt those. So thank you for giving yourself the gift of a, a couple of regulation first activities and um, just for being real and for jumping in and, and trying that.